and read for us. It's really on my heart now to just say these few words. Phil, we love you and your family too, your whole family too. So we come to the end of Matthew chapter 8. And I read verses 28 to 34. Entitled, The Healing of the Two Demon-Possessed Men. Now, as we knew last week, Jesus had been uh, with others on the boat in the storm-tossed lake, on the storm-tossed lake. So now verse 28 uh, begins to tell us this. When he arrived at the other side in the region of the Gadarenes, two demon-possessed men coming from the tombs met him. They were so violent that no one could pass the way. What do you want with us, son of God? They shouted. Have you come here to torture us before the appointed time? Some distance from them, a large herd of pigs was feeding. The demons begged Jesus, if you drive us out, send us into the herd of pigs. He said to them, go. So they came out and went into the pigs, and the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and died in the water. Those tending the pigs ran off, went into the town, and reported all this, including what had happened to the demon-possessed men. Then the whole town went out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they pleaded with him to leave their region. This is the word of God. Amen. So Lord, by your Holy Spirit, would you guide and direct um, what's about to be said. Help us to apply this to our lives and water the seeds that you plant in us today, that we may be fruitful for you and your kingdom. Amen. Isn't this one of those stories which is so familiar and yet it raises so many questions? Questions around why Jesus did what he did and what was the point of letting the herd of pigs die? And while we might scratch at the surface of some of these questions, there are some bigger pictures at play here which I want to draw our attention to this morning. The first one is that kind of good versus evil thing going on. It was a child, good versus evil was never far from the minds of me and my friends. Here we'd play cops and robbers, or goodies and baddies, as it were. And life since then has been saturated with hundreds, if not thousands, of ways of telling the story of the fight between good and evil. Tom and Jerry. Bugs Bunny and Elmer Fudd. The X-Men movies, James Bond, the Marvel superhero movies. You name it, the world seems to lap it up. We revere superheroes and especially we love a good underdog story, don't we? Well, this is one of those passages which is a real story of good versus evil, of, of Jesus versus Satan. And there's something quite telling from right at the start of this account that the, the, the baddies, i.e. the demons, they identify Jesus and they call him Son of God. Now up until this point, this is a title which has only been used by the devil in the wilderness. But it's a title which identifies the nature and person of Christ. That he is Jesus. He is the Messiah. That he is the Son of God. And those demons, they continue to say, have you come to torment us before the time? 
It's another indication that Jesus is the Messiah. Why? Because it's a reference to the eschatological, oh, I did it this time, eschatological judgment, the end time, when we will all be judged by God. And so this is a continuation of how the Gospel of Matthew points us towards the eternal future. It's seeking to point us in the right direction, and that direction is Christ Jesus. Did you notice the absolute authority that Jesus has in this encounter? He casts the, the, the demonic spirits out of the men with a single word, go. There's no special formula to this, is there? There's no specific prayer, magical word or sentence uttered. It's just the word go. I kind of imagine it as sounding like, just go get out of my sight. Anywhere but here away from me. That's sort of a go. You know when you're really cross with the kids? Go! And this is the absolute authority that Jesus has. And it presents the fact that Jesus is the answer to every manifestation of evil. That should have got an amen. <laughs> Are we all awake? Jesus is the answer to every manifestation of evil. This is why he describes himself as the light of the world, because where there is light, the darkness flees. Where there is light, the darkness cannot abound. In our world today, there's no point in us complaining that the world is too dark and saying, darkness, you're too dark, don't like you. Instead, we need to be directing our petitions, our requests, our prayers to Jesus to shine brighter in and through us. Because we are the light bulbs of Christ. We're like those Christmas fairy lights, you know, a long chain of them strung together. But Jesus shines through us today. He is the light, but he uses us. And we can ask Jesus to shine so brightly in us that the light, the darkness cannot remain. <clears throat> the thing is, Jesus is the answer to the problem of evil in the world. But we need to be challenged that he invites us to participate in that battle of good and evil, to be the tools in his hands. So are you burning brightly for Jesus? Do you need a new battery? Do you need to be put on charge, as it were? For a filling of power from the Holy Spirit that you might shine for him brightly once more. If you do, that's okay. We all need a rest at times. Rest is a spiritual discipline. To stop and to recharge. God rested on the seventh day, didn't he? So to stop and rest is no bad thing. The next thing that I pick out of this um, passage is that, that, that Jesus puts people before possessions. Imagine this for a minute. You're, you're walking down Broad Street, down this road in Pershaw. And as you go, you, know, you get halfway across the road as in the driven bit, and um, somebody races around the corner and they knock you down. And yeah, you're a bit sore and grazes on your elbow or whatever. And they jump out of their car. Look at the dent! Look at the dent! What did you do? You blooming idiot, you've dented my car! Exactly, never mind your leg. They pay no attention to the real victim or of the incident, which is you. And we would think that anyone in their right mind would be incensed by the driver for worrying more about their car than the individual who was hit by the car. Right? Well, 
personally, I think something similar happens in this passage. It's really easy to be concerned about the pigs. The poor pigs who, through no fault of their own, ended up meeting their deaths. Not for a meal, not to feed anybody, but they drowned. But if we look too closely at the pigs, we forget to look at the people. You see, in this account, there are two recorded demoniacs in my translation. But that's two human beings. Two people with families. Two people who are children. Two people who are potentially parents. Who are demon-possessed. But the single word of Jesus are now cleansed. These two people had nothing and no hope, but now they have freedom and the opportunity to be seen as human once more. On initial reading, I was struck by Christ's compassion and mercy even to the demons. But that's not the point. The point of this is that Jesus put the well-being of the possessed before the well-being of the owners of the animals. It indicates to to, to me that that Jesus' mission prioritizes people before possessions. But it goes even further than that. You see, the very fact that this community has a herd of pigs, it tells us they were not Jews because pigs were ritually unclean and not to be eaten. And yet Jesus has gone out of his way, crossing the lake, to take the gospel among the Gentile community. The kingdom of God among the Gentiles. And further than that, the possessed are unclean because they're living amongst the dead. In the caves and the tombs of the dead. And so once again, these people would have been richly unclean. What we see is that Christ crosses the borders to reach people. He crossed the lake to reach the demoniacs. He ate with the tax collectors. He approached the Samaritan, a woman at that. Touched the leper. Called out the dead. Jesus crossed the line. The cultural lines, the physical barriers, and he will stop at nothing set out by religion, the physical or the spiritual, to reach those who are in need. The question I have for you this morning is, Jesus is reaching out to you today through this message. Are you going to accept him as your saviour, your messiah? Or are you going to plead that he would leave, just like the community at that word I can't say? And then we need to think about whose authority. Is it going to be yours or his? Let's just remember for a moment that Jesus has arrived in a boat amongst a Gentile community, probably pagan community, in an area where the local population fear to tread because there's these violent men who live in the caves amongst the dead. Sounds like a horror movie script, doesn't it? And then suddenly, the issue that this community have been contending with is is resolved by some mysterious geezer who arrived on some small fishing boat. And now there's a new problem. Well, the pigs are dead. They must have thought that Jesus was some kind of wizard or magician. Who was he? Why was he there? What did he want with them or from them? You can imagine the distrust of their suspicion, their keenness to rid themselves of this person. So despite Jesus resolving this local and isolated issue where people would not pass for the fear of the violent demoniacs, the community not only ask but plead for Jesus to leave. I wonder if they used that same phrase, go, go. 
You see, Jesus resolved the people's, in a, people's issue in a way that they didn't expect or like. And therefore, their first reaction was to reject him. They couldn't cope with or handle or process the implications of Jesus in their midst or Jesus being in their lives. Would they have to change? Would they have to worship him? What's it going to cost? What about everything else in their lives that they might have to change if he sticks around? And friends, this is a, a reaction that's common to Christ still today. We think about the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Most of us are comfortable with the term and the understanding of God as Father. We're comfortable with God as Son. But Holy Spirit? Some of you. Perhaps we don't understand. Perhaps it's because we cannot put him in a box. We cannot control him. He works in mysterious ways. We cannot get our heads around him. And as a result, we shut him out or shut him down. And this is often caused because of misunderstanding or poorly educated um, Christians focusing too heavily on one or two aspects of the Spirit's ways and works. But like in that community, we can only imagine what might have been had they invited Jesus to stay. We can only imagine what Jesus can do in and through you if we allow the Holy Spirit to have his way in us and in this place. So I'm challenged to ask a question this morning. Whose authority has greater influence in your life and the life of this church? Is it my authority? Is it your authority? Is it the deacons or the members? Or is it Christ's? Amen. I hope and pray that we will give Jesus the authority over our lives, over this church, from this day forward. Amen. Amen. Friends, we're going to sing children will come back down to and join us and uh, we'll carry on. we stand together in Christ alone my hope is found he is my light my strength my song this cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm, 
What heights of love, what depths of peace When fears are stilled, when striving cease My comforter, my all in all Here in the love of Christ I stand Can somebody let the children know because I'm not sure I pressed the doorbell Thank you. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on him was laid, here in the death of Christ I live. ground his body lay light of the world by darkness slain then bursting forth in glorious day up from the grave he rose again and as he stands in victory since curse has lost its grip on me for I am his and he is mine Fought with the precious blood of Christ No guilt in life, no fear in death this is the power of Christ in me From life's first cry to final breath Jesus commands my destiny No power of hell, no scheme of man Can ever pluck me from his hand Till he returns Here in the power of Christ I stand No power of hell, no scheme of man Can ever pluck me from his hand Till he returns to hold me home Here in the power of Christ I stand No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand Till he returns or calls me home Here in the power of Christ I'll stand Please do take your seats. We're going to receive the offering. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we truly believe that you journey with us. We truly believe that you carry us through the difficult moments of life. That we are never alone, never forsaken. And Father, we want to give back to you as a sign of our thanks, a sign of our praise, a sign of our adoration, Lord. We cannot buy your love. We cannot buy your forgiveness. We cannot earn it. It is a gift. But we pray, Lord, that this money 
would go so that more would know that saving grace that is offered in Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Guys, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for giving. Because none of what we do would be possible without the finances. It costs a lot of money to just keep this building going. And so thank you for your contributions um, to the kingdom of God. It's greatly appreciated. Should we invite these young people up and we'll find out what they've been up to this morning? Excellent. Mm -hmm. Come on, Tim. Ruben's come in. Hey, we got... Excellent. You're not on your own, Tim. Come on over. Come on over. Right. We've got some fantastically neat coloring. Are these like the backpacks of your dreams? And Ruben's drawn a penguin. Or is that Jonah's drawn it? Ruben. Oh, Andrew drew it. Good job. So that's Ruben's dream penguin. And um, th are these your dream backpacks? No? So what have you been up to, guys? Do you want to tell us? You're going shy. Should we have a, should we have a read? Shall I, can I read that? Thanks, Tim. Jesus said, oh, this is, this is appropriate for today. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Oh, sorry, Tim. Now, I'm not going to go into detail, but that is really appropriate for what we've been talking about as grown-ups too. And do you know what else happened in the Bible? Do you remember creation? Yeah? So God did things on lots of days, didn't he? Can you remember what happened on the last day? He rested. Absolutely. He sat on his sun lounger, didn't he? Had a, had a, 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 a lemonade and a bowl of ice cream. And he rested. And God says that we should rest too. And so when we go to him, when we listen to him, he tells us to take rest as well. Now sometimes mummies and daddies will say, go to your bed and rest. That might not be the same kind of rest, but you've done some excellent coloring. So have you had a good time up, up there this morning? Yeah. At least Tim Shaw. <laughs> Guys, should we give them a round of applause? Appreciated. I do love to see what these guys are doing, and your drawing abilities far exceed mine. I'm, I'm well impressed. Um, I'm going to invite John up um, for a very good reason. John um, is going to tell you where he's off to next week and, and maybe tell us a, a little bit, and um, then we're going to pray for you, if that's all right. So do you want to tell us what you're up to next week? Uh, next week, I'm not going to be here. I'm going to be... In the Mumbles in Wales, I'm going away with an organization called UBM, otherwise known as the United Beach Missions. They are sending a group of about 30 people down to the Mumbles, split them up between two locations, and hold activities for younger holiday goers, and try and at the same time give them the word and tell them about Christ. In the afternoons, maybe sit them down, teach them some parables and stories. And in this way, we're going to try and spread the word of Christ to younger people who are going on holiday and try and give them something a lot better to learn from a holiday than just a nice view and some nice sun. I was just, I'm just come up here to tell you all what I'm going to be doing next week and hopefully ask some prayer for me and the rest of the team. I've not long been a Christian and I'm a bit, quite honestly, I'm a bit nervous about next week. I've never gone in any way, gone to share my faith like this before. So just wanted to let you all know and ask some prayers. Well, I think we can pray. Some of you guys can pray as well, because um, it's not just down to me, is it? We're a church family, so um, maybe one or two of you would like to say prayers out loud, and then um, you can reach a hand out towards John as well, and uh, you know, send the blessings his way, and then I'll conclude in prayer too.
Amen. Yeah, Heavenly Father, we thank you for John, uh, for his faith, uh, for his courage to step out and do something new. And we pray, Father, that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon him now, that he would be filled with you, and that that would overflow out of him, and that he would be able to take you wherever he goes, Lord, that he would be uh, filled and covered with the fragrance of Christ, that he would be the light uh, representing you in that place, Lord. And Father, we, we thank you that although his aim is to, to reach young people, that these young people can share with their families too, and that whole families may come to know you through what is going on. So Father, bless the, the whole team. Be with each one of them, Lord. Give them courage and boldness. Lord, we heard only just how you crossed the lines uh, to reach people. And we pray that this would be uh, just as evident for John and the team. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. One more thing. I have two prayer cards here. If, you, if any of you want them or know people you can pass them on to, just come and talk to me after the service and I'll give them to you. I've only got two, though, I'm afraid. Great. Thank you very much. And do talk to John. You know, encourage him and just find out a little bit more about what's going on and maybe what inspired him to do it as well. Um, yes, fantastic, really good stuff. Uh, I remember when I first went on my sort of mission trips and um, yeah, just the exciting buzz and the friendships you make, it'll be, it'll be tremendous. So we've got a birthday this week. I can't remember what day it is, I'm very sorry, but Rob Wheeler, it's been your birthday. Has it happened? Yes, yes. We're not going to ask you your age, don't worry. We won't even make you stand on a chair either to uh, embarrass you. But we will sing him a happy birthday, won't we, folks? Yeah? yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Rob. Happy birthday to you. May the Lord God bless you. May the Lord God bless you. May the Lord God bless and keep you. May the Lord God bless you. Right, we're not going to stop here. We're going to one final song to lead us out. Oh. 
says if he can find the song words. There we go. John, you can remember this whilst you're on the beach. It's a really catchy one. It can be quite annoying if it gets in your head too much. But it's true. So should we stand together and we'll sing so glad. Jesus, you are here with me. around to show that I'm so glad that you love me. Jesus, you are here with me. Jesus, you are all I need. I will follow where you lead me. I will worship you. So I clap my hands Shout your name so everyone can hear Jump as high as I can reach And dance around to show that I'm so glad that you love me Jesus, you are here with me Jesus, you are all I need I will follow where you lead me. I will worship you. So I clap my hands and wave them in the air. Shout your name so everyone can hear. Jump as high as I can reach. And dance around to show that I'm so glad that you love me. I'm so glad you love me, Jesus. I'm so glad you love me, Jesus. I'm so glad you love me. So I clap my hands and wave them in the air. Shout your name so everyone can hear. Jump as high as I can reach. And dance around to show that I'm so glad that you love me. Clap my hands and wave them in the air. Shout your name so everyone can hear. Jump as high as I can reach. And dance around to show that I'm so glad that you love me. Clap my hands and wave them in the air. Shout your name so everyone can And dance around to show that I'm so glad that you love me. It's important we remember that. That Jesus is with us. That he's all that we need. That we should follow him. And that we should worship him. Amen. 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 Should we say the grace? So do turn around, say hello to one another, be friendly to one another, embrace. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Um, if you're sticking around for lunch, it's a kind of picnic style lunch and... Um, 
discussions around vision, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And um, if not, we love you, we bless you, and uh, stick around for teas and coffees anyway. Oh. <laughs> it's mutual. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bless you all.